1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17. While you don't necessarily have to be a juggler to deliver great sales demos, it could be a great feature that keeps the audience engaged, which is, by the way, one of the great elements of a sales demo. Engaged enough? <laughs> I have actually learned to juggle three ball cascade just for this video. Keep watching until the end to learn the five great elements of a sales demo that will help you shine the next time you have a meeting with your audience. They will come back and ask you for more. Can't stop doing this. I'm already drenched in sweat. All right, let's start from the top. Less is more. We've heard this before, but what does it mean? We want the audience to learn our product as much as possible because that will ensure that they like the product, right? As sales engineers, we are very passionate about what we are selling and we want the audience to feel the same enthusiasm. But sometimes we fall short. One typical pitfall is that we're overly enthusiastic, so we're overwhelming the audience. The audience doesn't know our product nearly as well as we do. What seems straightforward to us because we are showing it every day or using the product daily can be very confusing for them, seeing it for the first time. So take a step back. Give the audience enough time to process what they've seen and heard, to ask questions and to engage in a discussion with you. Ultimately, our goal is to get them to ask to see more of the product rather than mentally checking out during your demo because of the information overload. My rule of thumb is to only use half of the allocated meeting time to show the actual demo. The rest of the time, the other half should be for Q&A, for discussion, planning next step, there's introduction round, there's people being late to the meeting, and that takes time. There's nothing worse than running out of time in the mid-demo and not being able to bring the point across. Keep the audience engaged. The success of a demo and the product it showcases obviously depends on how the audience perceives it. It doesn't matter what we think about the product. The only thing that matters is what the audience thought of the product. And one way to increase the likelihood that they'll leave with a positive impression is to keep them engaged. Just think about it. You're watching a really bad movie that is not engaging you. You find it boring. You find it stupid. You're not happy. You, you want to watch another movie, right? And now think about watching a really cool movie which keeps you engaged, where you lost track of time, where you feel like you're one of the heroes of the movie. That's where you want to be with your audience as well. You want them to be so engaged that they stick with your demo and don't mentally check out until the very end. So how do we keep the audience engaged during a meeting? The first thing is to ask audience questions. It's very simple. At the beginning of the meeting, everybody introduces themselves and we should use this opportunity to ask them some questions like what's their motivation, what do they know about the product, write this down, and then you can use it later to keep them engaged. Then as you go along and you're doing your demo, ideally you want them to ask a lot of questions. But if they're not asking questions, sometimes that happens in online meeting, the audience could be a little bit disconnected. In face-to-face -face meetings, especially big groups, they might be shy to ask questions. So you should ask them questions. Make these questions simple. Ask yes-no questions. Are you able to follow so far? Is this feature relevant for you? Do you like these colors? How relevant is this feature on a scale 1 to 10? You can ask scale questions and they can write the comments in the chat box if they don't feel they want to speak. Another good way to keep the audience engaged is to personalize your demo by asking persons by name, calling them by name. This is a way to keep them engaged because now that they know that they might be called by name, they will pay a little more attention to the meeting. So that's a way to increase the engagement level a little bit. Hey guys, I'm Sasha and I work as a sales engineer for a leading cloud software company and you're on my channel Better Pre-Sales with Sasha where I share free advice with you on how to thrive as a sales engineer. Keep watching. Number three, explain what you will show before you show it. Start by setting very clear expectations for the meeting. Explain what they'll be seeing in the demo and what they will have learned at the end of the demo. For example, in this session, I'm introducing a simple framework for building web applications. By the end of this meeting, each one of you will be able to build a Hello World web application. Setting these expectations up front makes it easier for the audience to follow you along because now they know what the end goal is. Okay, time to get coffee. Oh, hey there, office co-worker. Hey, have we met before? You look familiar. 
Nope, I don't think so. Oh. Want a coffee? Yeah, a quick one. I have a meeting coming up. Sure, man. This machine's got it all. Espresso, double, lungo, frother, grinder. Wow, wow. Too much info. Can it do a coffee in under a minute? Oh, yeah, of course. With just one click of a button. Thank you, buddy. Hopefully you've guessed it already. Number four is demo in the customer context. Focus on addressing the customer challenges. Any features or product aspects that you're showing that are not demonstrating to the customer how they're solving their business challenges is a huge waste of time for you and for the customer. It doesn't matter how enthusiastic you are about how cool your product is. It doesn't even matter if the customer appreciates how cool your product is. The only thing that matters is for the customer to understand how your product is addressing the business challenges they have to solve. And number five is make sure you have scheduled a prep call with your champion before the demo and make sure you have scheduled a follow-up call after the demo. A good demo requires a good prep and if you haven't seen my video on how to run great demos, make sure that you watch it after this video. I'll put a link in the description box below. Before the actual demo call, gather enough context to understand the customer's business challenges. Remember the previous point, you want to demonstrate that your product is addressing their challenges. To do that, you have to talk to the customer, obviously. Talk to them and try to understand which specific points your demo should bring across, which specific challenges your demo should be addressing. And that's not all. You should always have scheduled a follow-up meeting that happens after the demo. So you have three meetings total. One is the prep meeting with a champion to understand their business challenges so you can address them in the second meeting, which is the actual demo time. And then you have the third meeting where you want to get feedback on how the demo went from the customer's perspective. And you also want to discuss next steps. Ultimately, the aim is to put the product in customer's hands and get them to test it, which we call a proof of concept, a POC. And in this video, you learn how to plan and scope a proof of concept that you will win and ultimately get the customer to buy our product. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Please click on like to help spread this knowledge to other people out there and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Stay healthy and stay tuned.